On Saturday, 2nd September at 11.50 a.m., India's first solar mission will lift off on a PSLV XL rocket. The mission is called Aditya L1. Aditya because Aditya is a name for the sun and explain what L1 is and all the other things about the mission we have Amitabh Sinha with us here. Amitabh, welcome. Thank you, Manajit. Um, so Amitabh, uh, all of us were literally over the moon last week uh, when uh, Chandrayaan 3, the lander, made this uh, perfect landing on the lunar surface. Now we have a solar mission. So really fast from the sun to the moon to the moon to the sun. Uh, yes, I, I mean, it's coming at just the right uh, time probably. But uh, this mission, Aditya L1, as it is called, it's been in the making for a very long time. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, you know, the planning for this had started uh, somewhere uh, in early 2000s when, when Chandrayaan 1 was being planned, you know, much before uh, Chandrayaan 1 was launched in 2008. Uh, ISRO was already planning for future missions and one of that was supposed to be this Aditya L1. Now, of course, at that time, it was just at the planning stages. Uh, go beyond, uh, I mean, what next after Chandrayaan 1? Uh, of course, Mangalyan was being talked about, I mean, a mission to Mars. And at that very time, they were also preparing for a mission to Sun as well. So, the so this is as early as the early 2000s? Early 2000s, somewhere around 2004, 2005, Five, when, okay. when first time we heard about Aditya mm -hmm. uh, L1. At that point of time, uh, the name was not, not given, but uh, you know, a mission to the sun was very much on the cards. Uh, when ISRO was talking about future, it was talking about, you know, uh, sending exploration missions to Mars and then to sun. So the Aditya L1 mission has its origins at least now 15 years back. Now, of course, it took a lot of time in the uh, making and all this while it was not being, uh, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't as if the mission was supposed to go at that point of time. It would have, in any case, it would have gone by, uh, only after the orbiters were sent to uh, the uh, moon, moon, which is the Chandrayaan mission, also the orbiter to Ma uh, Mars, which was Mangalyaan, Mangalyaan. Which, which happened in 2013 and 2014, uh, right? So, it was only after these two missions that uh, Aditya 1 uh, or, or the mission to the sun uh, would have become a possibility, mainly because, uh, you know, uh, the uh, especially Chandrayaan, I mean, the moon is much nearer uh, to Earth. And so, uh, there were a lot of technologies that need to be validated mm. uh, for ISRO. And ISRO had mm. not done these kind of missions mm. earlier. Uh, so, uh, you know, those technologies needed to be validated. Also, uh, ISRO needed to gain some mm. experience uh, of doing these kind of mm. uh, missions. Uh, the rockets, the subsystems, everything had to be developed mm. uh, specifically for this. Also, uh, for, for the Sun mission, you know, uh, because the sun is so bright, because you don't actually get anywhere close to the sun, uh, the the kind of instruments that are supposed to be put on board that that are very very different from uh, what goes for the orbit missions to correct. Uh, correct. So so I mean, and, uh, okay. Mars. So 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 now that we have we 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 essentially what you're saying is that we now have a date and the time for yes. the launch of the mission, but the mission itself, yeah. uh, ISRO has been planning this yeah. for some time. The conception happened. The conception. Much uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And 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 uh, a lot of time uh, for the the preparatory phase of the yes. mission also went so so tell us about the mission itself tell us about Aditya L1 the spacecraft and the rocket give us a broad idea of what is going to happen so this is very very different from what we have just seen you know, okay. landing on the moon now, of course you cannot land on sun you cannot even go anywhere close yeah. to the sun so obviously this, yeah you only can observe the sun from from a very great distance actually so this is very different from even the mangalyan mission which which was an orbiter mission you actually go around mars. Uh, the uh, mars so the the spacecraft would be almost stationary at that place and it will have continuous it will make continuous observations of the sun. Uh, there are various, I think, six or seven uh, uh, payloads, different instruments on, on the spacecraft, which will make different kind of observations, which will carry out different kinds of uh, experiments. Uh, you know, looking so, you at the sun. so you say that this point L1, and you will explain to us what L1 is. You said that this is 
still very very far away from the sun so yes. so how far away from earth is this point uh so the distance between earth and sun is somewhere around 150 million kilometers uh the l1 point is just about uh one point of 50 1.5 1. million, million kilometers 1.5 yeah. million kilometers from earth which means this spacecraft is traversing only one percent of the distance between earth and, and the sun. sun so it is 99 percent away from the uh, sun just one percent away from the earth so that's where this point is and it will make continuous observation so it's, it's quite a distance it's not going very close to the sun uh, for obvious reasons so so and okay now um, these these Lagrange points are are called parking slots in space yes. so as in this is a space where a spacecraft can presumably just go and park itself now uh, okay what is this Lagrange point and and how does this work Lagrange points uh, are places in sort of Two body moving systems uh, and actually if you take the spacecraft it becomes a three body moving system uh, and we are talking about two bodies two large bodies the earth and the sun uh, which also have large gravitational pulls also when you are moving in in uh, in a curved sort of an atmosphere uh, either in a circle or uh, even ellipse. in an ellipse uh, you know, when you're moving around uh, in those kind of curved spaces, you also feel a sort of centripetal force and there is a centrifugal force going out. Uh, now, so there are lots of forces at work here, the gravitational force, the centripetal force because of uh, going around. So these five, there are five spaces in a two body or a three body system like this, wherein, or a two body system, wherein this third body actually, uh, feels stable stable as it uh, you know the forces the different kinds of forces acting on this body actually gets cancelled out right so, okay so the gravitational pull of the earth the gravitational pull of the sun, sun. the centripetal force uh, you know, going around all those and the centrifugal balanced. force yeah. yeah so all those get balanced at these five positions right so it's a it's a it's a stable point and it's a very good observation point for the sun specifically this l1 uh, the other the location of the other four uh, lagrange points are not very favorable for observing the sun this l1 is a very favored position because it's right in right between the earth and the sun there are two other points which are on the sides uh, there is one behind the, the sun, sun. Now, that doesn't make uh, much of a sense because you won't be uh, one you have to go very far uh, in, or to the other side of the sun uh, also uh, you want nothing I mean it would be difficult to communicate with yeah. the earth there there is one behind the earth okay uh, now again that for obvious is, reasons yeah. it, no it the sun gets obstructed so this L1 point which is which is between the earth and the sun is a very good observation point and that's where Aditya is headed okay and uh, so so let me get this uh, there are five of these points in every two body system you're saying so this kind of system this kind of system so right. this is the Lagrange point one of the earth sun system yes so there will be Lagrange points for say the earth moon system as well Yes, can be. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, and this is a point where the spacecraft, Aditya 1 in this case, uh, Aditya L1 in this case, uh, when it goes and it sort of finds itself uh, in a sort of a stationary position in relation to the other yes. two bodies. Yes. So it's yes. kind of locked in a particular point and it's looking at the sun from that point. Is that right? Yeah. So almost stationary. The reason I say almost stationary is because. Uh, you know, it's not stationary even with respect to these two bodies. Uh, it's almost stationary because it's it's going in an orbit. Uh, That's right, but it's locked with the yeah, two. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's moving with these bodies, of course, but even at that L1 point, it is going around that L1 point. It's not standing still. That's it's, it's moving in an orbit around that L1 point and then moving together with these two bodies as they go around. So it's a very complicated sort of a trajectory. Uh, I mean, the Earth-Sun trajectory itself is very complicated, not the kind of things that we see on paper in a two-dimensional thing. So it will have a very complicated trajectory, but 
the whole point is to get to a position uh, where number one uh, you know if you're if you're if all the forces are balanced then you require very less amount of energy uh, to just remain there correct otherwise if you are being uh, if you are experiencing the pull of the earth or or the sun then you would need to spend energy to just remain in that right, kind of position right. right so here this this place is favorable also from the point of uh, view of the fact that uh, you require very less energy you don't spend any, any energy in being there because that's a place which is the most stable mm. uh, and as i said earlier it's also a very good observation point for the sun so you know you can be constantly looking at the sun and making observations so are there other uh, uh, the james webb space telescope is yeah it's it's very much uh, yeah, it's near at that. l2 is it it's it's at l2 it's l2 l2 then uh, there is another uh, i think i'm forgetting the, i think the solar soho, orbiter soho the the, the is observatory it the soho or the, uh, there is another one or maybe soho okay. I'm, I'm forgetting okay. that but there is one uh, one mission uh, sun mission a solar mission i think it's by the european space agency mm -hmm. which is also located here uh, there have been other solar missions which don't go here in fact uh, uh, there have been missions which have gone much closer to the sun uh, uh, i think one of these uh, most of these solar missions have been sent either by nasa or by the european space uh, agency uh, and one of them has ventured quite close to the sun in fact it has uh, I mean, the nearest that it has been to the sun is about 40 million kilometers. Uh, we will be stationed, as I said, almost 150 million. I mean, just yeah. 1.5 uh, million kilometers less than From 150. The Earth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we we are more than 100 kilometer, 100 million kilometers away. There is one particular spacecraft. I'm forgetting the name, but that has ventured quite close. I'm right. nearly. 40 million kilometers away from from sun and just a clarification we call it lagrange point but it's not actually a point I it's mean, not a point it's yeah, it's yeah. universal yeah, scale yeah, yeah so yeah. so it's it's not yeah, just it's, it's a huge, yeah yeah it's a, yeah it's a huge space huh. so that i mean it can accommodate multiple <laughs> spacecraft it's <laughs> so not exactly. crash into yeah. each other yeah. yes, okay yes. this is fantastic so yeah. and uh tell me uh amitabh once we reach there and once the spacecraft is positioned what sort of experiments i mean why do we need to look at the sun from that close what is it that we are looking for so there are lots of as i said there are difficulties in watching the sun it's i mean the kind of uh, observations that you can make for moon or even for other planets it's not possible for sun or any other star again for obvious reasons you know you just can't go very near to it also your instruments can't be i mean the same kind of same kind of instruments that you use to look at moon for example many of them would not be very suitable for looking at the sun uh, mainly because again the kind of radiations that come out and the heat and everything so uh, we do not because there are difficulties in watching the sun uh, we do not have very good understanding of the kind of processes that keep happening in the sun and the, we we have i mean there are uh, uh, we understand some of the processes but we need to study much more so this spacecraft as other spacecraft that have gone to the sun to study the sun they are mainly looking at the kind of internal processes that keep happening within the sun to have a much better understanding of what is going on uh, very root what is it uh, uh, that uh, leads to a uh, huge amount of solar flares for example mm. there are periodic bursts of Correct. huge amount of energy uh, right so uh, how does how do those things happen what exactly is uh, uh, how is energy getting produced within the sun we have an idea but you know more things need to be known so it's basically just trying to understand the internal processes within the sun and so there are various kinds of experiments looking at various different internal processes for which we'll carry out different experiments using the different payloads that we have on Aditya. Wonderful, wonderful. So we are going to be stationed at L1 looking at the sun, solar flares, uh, studying the corona of the sun closely yes, yes. and uh, hopefully a new chapter in, in uh, science exploration of space. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, this, this is a new phase in uh, the evolution of ISRO, you know, uh, looking, I mean, ISRO uh, with Chandrayaan, with Mangalyaan, now Aditya, uh, and there are more to come. Uh, there is there is one uh, mission to Venus which Venus. is pending, uh, you know, in another two years time we'll see. So, 
what what is happening is now isro is evolving into a very serious player in all kinds of planetary exploration hmm. uh, which is not what it used to do say before chandrayaan happened in 2008 uh, it was focused on other things like launching of satellites you know commercial launches uh, all sorts of you know uh, communication systems broadcasting and everything those kind of activities it was uh, mainly focused on now we are moving into a very different phase wherein uh, we are getting into serious planetary exploration scientific missions uh, so the uh, you know the kind of work that isro is doing uh, is changing very and is becoming very different from what it used to do say uh, one or two decades earlier so thank you amitabh that was great and to all of you watching us uh, stay tuned for all the updates on this mission and all the other future missions of isro on the nnexpress.com website on our social media channels on our youtube channel thank you very much